I'm Kate with New Beginnings Healing Ministry, and you are watching episode 11 of Fiat, the resounding yes that will transform your life. In this episode, I will be sharing some stories about my own conversion. And when I say conversion, for me, it wasn't you know going from a certain kind of religion to another or or anything like that. For me, it was watching my life completely transform the moment I started really saying fiat, thy will be done. And you know, living in a secular world, we're told to, to live the exact opposite. And if you watched my video on new, new Age, you know, that's another thing where it's it's all about us and it's about finding true happiness and you know setting our mind to certain things and manifesting those into reality. And it completely takes God out of the picture, no matter which way you look at it. And I tried tailoring it to my own beliefs, but you know, when we're told to love our enemies and to be there for others who are going through chaos, so that's mercy. You know, when we're told to do that, we can't we can't think new age because if you do that, then you're just gonna attract a bunch of that into your life, a bunch of chaos and horrible things into your life. And clearly that is not, that's not how it works. So I've, I've, I had a run in with new age, thank the Lord. I found my way out and that was through the death of my brother. I think it just put an end to it immediately. And I started transforming my life by accepting God's will. And for me, that looked like, you know, we got married, my husband and I, he was very into gardening, actually permaculture, if you know what that is, and becoming more self-reliant or resilient, things like that, you know, the chickens, cows, and we live on the side of a highway. So, and it's a busy highway. And now people know us as, oh, are you the one with the donkey? Are you the one with the cows? It's like, yeah, it's us. So... It's a very different way of life. And my husband also was homeschooled and that was foreign to me. I did not want to homeschool at all. I didn't want to garden, forget homesteading, too much work. I just wanted to have this big lawn, you know, nicely manicured and beautiful landscape, stuff like that. And I was closed off to everything else. And it started causing some issues. And we would, we would argue quite a bit about this because he was trying to really transform our property and I was not up for the way he was wanting to transform it. So just one story of, of this whole thing I'm talking about. So this was back in 2018, I believe, 2016 maybe. I started coming around to the idea because I would pray about it and Our Lady was very, very, very adamant about supporting your husband and encouraging him because he too is being divinely guided, stuff like that. And I'm just like, divinely guided by what? Because he's destroying my yard. He's putting a permanent cow fence in my yard. He, he met a guy at Rule King and the guy offered to come over and help him with this fence. Bizarre. But that's what they did and he didn't ask me to do it so I just look out and all of a sudden we have a permanent you know electric fence in my yard and so it was fine got over it and I, I continued to pray and there was a huge change and it wasn't in my husband it was in myself and our lady really helped me see the beauty in that way of living and she helped me be open to it and now I look at where we are in the world and it's like, why did I even have to put up a fight at all? Why didn't I just let my husband, you know, do all these plans and get everything done that he wanted? But he caved <laughs> under, under me. So anyways, back to these, this story I have. So at the time I was praying about the ministry, okay? just having people over, things like that, praying with others. And it was very, very clear Our Lady wanted animals. And I'm thinking, no, I, I don't even want a dog. I'm fine with chickens because my husband takes care of those, but I don't want any animals. And she was very adamant about it. I mean, it kept coming and coming and I thought, okay, fine, I'll get animals. 
And I'm, I'm thinking maybe another cow. I don't know. I didn't really know what animals there were. I know that sounds stupid, but you know, I grew up with the basics, you know, chickens, a few roosters, stuff like that. And that was it. So I was praying. It was around my brother's birthday, October 25th. And I was praying and it just came to me, miniature donkey. And I'm like, miniature donkey? Like, I didn't know there were miniature donkeys at all. So I started researching and they were like four to eight hundred dollars. And I'm like, there's no way my husband's gonna go for this. You know, Mary wants animals on the yard or in our in our yard, and they're eight hundred. I mean, I didn't even ask because I knew it sounded ridiculous. So I started praying, you know, Lord, if I'm supposed to get a miniature donkey, just make it very obvious. And a couple weeks later, I was on I was going to bed, it was eleven thirty at night, and I thought I need to get on Craigslist. So I got on Craigslist again. And all of a sudden there's a little posting for farm animals. And a miniature donkey was one of one of the many animals listed. So I emailed the lady, she emailed right back and she said, here's my address, you can come anytime tomorrow. And I thought, okay. So I'm like, Lord, I'm gonna need somebody to go with me. It's an hour and 15 minutes away. And I don't wanna ask anybody. So again, if I'm supposed to go, have someone call me and not only call me, but offer to go with me. So I was going to bed and I did a few more things around the house. I go into my room and I'm getting into my bed. I was not scared at all. Nothing. I wasn't thinking of anything. And just a warning, I'm going to tell you a story. It has to do with warfare. So just if you're not into that sort of stuff, just turn it off right now and watch the next episode. But so anyways, I'm, I'm in bed and I started feeling very uneasy and going from, from things from the past, you know, I, I know what that means. So I started praying and I could feel something in the corner of my room looking at me. So I turn over really slowly because I knew what it was going to be. And it was a very dark, shadowy figure and I didn't scream I didn't tell John to come in the room because he was out in the living room I didn't I didn't do that because I knew what it was and so I prayed and it just kept looking at me and I inside I knew okay he's he's trying to destroy this next this next phase of the ministry, whatever that is to look like, you know, obviously with the animals or something. And my husband and I, we kind of had an argument that night out of nowhere and a little bit even that next morning. So I knew that something was going on. So I I finally, I went to bed. I felt more at peace, went to bed. I got a call at 7.30 in the morning from my sister who was at the time a night nurse for labor and delivery and she never woke up before 11 or 12 in the afternoon and she called me at 7 30 in the morning and I was nervous to answer and I think it's because we, we all have a little bit of PTSD from our brother you know from his death from the accident everybody getting the call it's just like so 7 30 answer I'm like hello and she said Kate I'm like yeah like what happened? Who's hurt? Where, you know, she said, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, are you? (laughs) And I just knew, I just, I totally knew what was going on. And she just said, she said, Kate, I had the most horrible dream ever. I've never had a dream of the enemy. The devil is what she said, but I had the scariest dream. And I'm like, what was it? Because he was in my room. You know, so she just said, you know, I, I could see him around you and he was trying to destroy. And she said, I woke up and I screamed and she said, I've never done this before. I woke up and sat up in my bed. And as I sat up, I screamed, Mary, pray for her and Jesus protect her. And she's like, so I'm just, I'm just calling to see if you're okay because that really freaked me out. And I'm just like, Lauren, what are you doing today? <laughs> she said, nothing. What, I mean, I'm up now. I can't go back to bed. I, I, that was the scariest dream. I said, okay, well, there's these animals. Would you want to go with me? 
And long story short, we go. We get out of the car when we're there, you know, we get out and this huge monarch butterfly, you know, from the length of our car goes right across the windshield, up and then in front of this lady's garage and we just followed it and we're like, okay, hi Dan, you know, we're in the right spot. And this lady comes out, she takes us to see the animals. And I said, okay, well, I just want to see the donkey. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry, I, the, the donkey is spoken for. And I'm like, when did that happen? Like, you told me they were free, that's why I'm here. I want, I want to buy them, you know? I didn't say any of that. And I just said, oh, okay, you know, that stinks. <laughs> And she just said, okay, well, let me show you, show you all the other animals. And I'm thinking, I don't want the other animals. Like, I just want to see the donkey. So the donkey, we did get to see the donkey, you know, eventually. And so cute. Just, and I'm not one for animals, like I said. But I go up to this donkey, and I'm just petting it. And I'm just like, what, what is his name? I'm just curious. And she goes, oh, that one? That's Danny. And my sister and I just looked at each other because we called, you know, Dan, we called him Danny. That was his, it was Daniel, so Danny. And we just looked at each other and I'm like, I'm totally going to get this dog. <laughs> so me being weird, I just did a little side of the cross on his head and I'm like, you are so coming home with me. I just know it. So as we're leaving, you know, she takes us in her house and we're talking and the divine mercy picture of Jesus was on the fridge. And so we talked about our faith and stuff like that. And she is Catholic, but she had, she had fallen away and she wasn't really practicing anything at that point. And she just said, you know, if anything falls through, I'll let you know. I'm like, okay. Well, the next day I got a call and she said that the donkeys had there were two donkeys actually that had fallen through and she said I just wanted to offer you those donkeys and any animal you saw on our property and I'm thinking I'm not gonna be able to buy all those you know I and she said I actually I want to give them to you for free so if you would like any of them just let me know and we will work something out I'm like oh my gosh I have to get these you know free and so I'm calling my husband he was okay with it which was also bizarre and long story short, we go and we get all of these animals. We got two horses, two miniature donkeys, uh, a big cow. It was a miniature cow, but it was huge. And a sheep. Uh, what else? Geese. I can't even remember. We got a lot of it. We literally got a farm that day. And I mean, it just looked hilarious bringing them back on our driveway coming down with this huge stock trailer and the cows that we had already they were all lined up against the fence watching all of these new animals <laughs> come out of the, the stock trailer and to think that they were all given to me for free and not only that she she loaded us down with feed hay um water troughs everything halters lead ropes i mean thousands of dollars worth of stuff medicine everything everything we would need and it was amazing and i'm just thinking you know my husband he he's he's wonderful and he knows that i'm being called to do this sort of stuff and it is hard for him and he really hasn't been able to wrap his head around wrap his mind around some of the things i say and again i understand that so it's been difficult and when anything big happens, it's like, babe, look at this. Like, don't you see it? And he just, yeah, it's fine, Kate. Let's, you know, we can do it. So it's just really neat how, how each thing continues to come to fruition. And it's just really beautiful to see how the Lord can transform our lives if we allow him. So all of these animals, you know, they... And they were a ton of work. We were way in over our head. And my, we went through a, a different a career change. And we, we ended up getting rid of almost all of them. So it was, it was, it was difficult. And it's, we probably did take more than what we were supposed to. You know, I heard miniature donkey. So we probably should have just stuck with the donkey. But all of these animals, you know, they provided so much healing. Not only for you know, the little kids and adults that come to our house, but for me, 
you know, here I am trying to bring healing to others and I don't realize sometimes how broken I am still, you know, because we heal on different levels. And just when you think you've healed, it's like a whole new level of healing comes and it's, it's just awesome. So, you know, with this healing, these little animals, it's just, it's amazing. It really is how God can heal all of us through nature and through these animals. And for me, it was the quickest way to accepting the way of life that God desired for me. And, you know, before I knew it, I was out, you know, leading my little horse and donkey over to, you know, the pasture area and feeding chickens and you know, shoveling manure, which I don't mind it at all. I, I always thought I would hate it. I love it. Maybe it's just having time out of the house. Maybe that's what I like. But still, I love this way of living. And I never knew that I even desired it. You know, I always tell people I am truly living the life that I never wanted, but also the life that I unknowingly desired all along. So with this, with, with these animals, with gardening, with homeschooling, I, found, I find so much joy in all of it. And to think that I never wanted it, it kind of puts me in my place and lets me know, okay, Kate, you don't know what you want. You really don't. So that is why I'm always so open to what God wants because it's like, well, if he, if he brings it to me, then there's probably a reason. You know, I'm probably going to learn a lot or I'm probably going to really, you know, enjoy it or find joy in it, something. So I think that there is a lesson here for all of us to just say fiat, thy will be done and let God work in our lives and transform us because through that, we will find that lasting happiness, which is joy. And even when life is very difficult, which I feel like that's every day, you know, nothing I'm doing right now is easy. It's really not even fun most of the time. But I have this peace within me that nobody can take. And that's kind of cool. I just love it. And I never knew the difference between happiness and joy. I never, I thought joy was just like a, an old term for happiness. But now I see that happiness comes from things of this world that you enjoy doing. But true joy comes from Jesus. So living your life according to his will, the byproduct of that is joy. So if you're doing that, you will, you will find joy. So for your homework today, you know, after hearing that whole story, you know, it's not going to be do to go and get a bunch of animals or, you know, get yourself into gardening or anything like that. But just to be open to what God is putting on your heart. You know, we are, there's a lot of changes going on in our world right now. And, you know, if you're homeschooling for the first time or if you're feeling like you should be homeschooling, or, you know, no, there, there's no decision right now that is easy. So what you, what you need to do is take some time and just pray and ask the Lord, you know, what is it that you want? You know, am I doing what you're wanting? If not, can you show me? Can you show me what I need to do in order to be joyful? And don't expect easy answers because a lot of the time it's changing who you spend time with, what you do in your spare time, um, you know, just different things. Like I said, I never wanted to homeschool. I never wanted to garden. I never wanted to basically do anything that I'm doing right now. But I can't imagine living in any other way. I mean, I don't even want to go there. It's just like, and now it's like the tables have turned. Now my husband, he wants to go explore and vacation and do different things like that. And I'm like, what happened to homesteading? Let's just, <laughs> let's just build our little, our little homestead and live simply and be happy and joyful. So I do think that if you do this and start making little changes, I mean little changes, you know, the music you listen to, every once in a while, turn on 99.1. Joy FM, you know, listen to some Christian music. 
Say a few more prayers throughout the day. Don't, don't say actual prayers. I mean, those are good too. But sit and just talk. Just as, as you would talk to a friend. Because that is what Jesus is there for. And Mary and the saints. And just ask for, ask for help. Ask for guidance. And in doing so, you know, joy. And that's what we all need right now. And peace. We need peace. <laughs> so that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.